Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Today we're going to continue our search for the best inexpensive lithium battery available. Today's candidate has absolutely nothing to hide. It is the Elefast Transparent. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I'm a, an engineer and I've been doing this review series on these batteries because I developed this thing called a bank manager. It helps you charge these, mix these in your existing system. Other videos on it. If you're thinking about lithium, you probably should think of one of those. Anyway, people are buying those and then asking me, hey, what battery should I buy? And man, I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. Uh, I bought some very expensive batteries and I don't recommend them to anyone. So I decided to do this series. This battery just came to me. It's very interesting because we can see right into it. Um, at first look, I thought it was kind of silly. Um, why do we need a transparent case? Because, you know, I'm a boater. We put this thing in the deepest, darkest recesses and forget about them. Then it occurred to me, we're not the only ones that use batteries. Sometimes people like to see the batteries. I bet you, you car stereo guys out there, might find this really interesting. Kind of gives that high techy look. In fact, um, if you got some of these little LED strip lights and shoved them inside, you could have like internal lighting. You could have all kinds of effects. So for the right person, this could be quite the thing if it's a good battery. Let's find out if it's a good battery. We're gonna dig into this battery and see what we can see about it. Uh, the one test I can't do is like run it for 20 years and see how it died and see how long it lasted. But short of that, we're gonna do a bit of an electrical analysis to see if the cells are balanced right at the beginning. We're gonna do the little overcharge trick that I don't think batteries should do, but we're gonna test out the BMS and make sure it protects the cells. We're gonna do a high load discharge where we're gonna pull the full rated power out of this battery and see how it holds up. That's very telling about the internal resistance and uh, various other things. I'll go into that in detail. Then we're gonna charge it back up properly, not overcharging it, and do a full control discharge to find out how many amp hours it holds. Uh, then I'm gonna put it on our leaderboard, which means I'm going to evaluate it compared to other batteries I've evaluated. If you're interested in this leaderboard, and if you're shopping for batteries, you should be, go to the description of this video and click on the leaderboard link. You'll find a table with all the batteries that are reviewed and their rankings and their cost and where to buy them most cheaply and all of that good stuff. So let's dig in. The Amazon dimensions aren't always right. So I'm gonna measure this myself. Sorry, old. I get 13 and 3 eighths inches, which is 34 centimeters by 7 and 3 quarters inches, which is uh, 19 and a half centimeters, I guess. And then I'm going to measure its height. And as per my convention, I'm not measuring the terminals. I'm measuring to the top of case, 8 and 3 quarters inches or 22 uh, centimeters. And it weighs this much. This battery has a fairly reasonable price, actually. It is uh, that price right now on Amazon. Last I looked, it was about 280 bucks. And, um, well, just on first blush here, doesn't look like they cut a lot of corners. I mean, if they used substandard wire or anything, you'd see it. You can see everything about this battery. I think now I'm gonna open it up. So let's dig in. Um, just advice on opening it. I, uh, obviously played with the little screws a little bit. Uh, you've got to take out these plugs and the plugs are uh, just plastic pushed into the hole, but with a little bit of glue. And what I did is I grabbed this and just a little smaller than a quarter inch drill and drilled down. And it wasn't precision work. Uh, wiggle it, drill crooked until you get to the center, then just drill. And since your drill bit smaller than the actual hole, when you get most of the way out, uh, for most of the time, the little drill plug just kind of spun right out and I, it was easy to remove. Um, it really wasn't difficult at all. Okay, well I got to tell you, that was the easiest one I've ever opened. Uh, just screws. I imagine they'll fall out of the lid if I tip it, which they do. I'll find them later. 
There's a nice seal that it would press into. I think this is a fine case from that point of view. Um, <laughs> smells like a Chinese factory, so we know it seals the air pretty good. What do we got here? Uh, well, the case itself, um, the transparent plastic is probably not going to be as durable as the stuff that other battery cases are made of. So you might have to be a little more careful with it. You know, just don't throw it around. I mean, it's tough. It's hard plastic, but it's a little more brittle. Um, also, I don't see a lot of foam. In fact, there's no foam at all. So shock loads will be transmitted into the case if you were to throw it around. Don't do that. Uh, it's not attached. Is it easy to lift here? <clears throat> there we go. This battery is made by the same company that makes the other LFS battery, as you might guess. They make a lot of batteries for a lot of uh, companies that uh, resell batteries, but this is their own line. I can see they're the same cells that were in that battery, and I really liked that battery and its cells. The BMS is by the, the same company that they use in their other battery. Their other battery has a different BMS, though. It has a Bluetooth capability. This one doesn't. But, you know, if you don't need to play with your phone to deal with your battery, I'm sure this is perfectly good at bringing power in and putting power out and protecting the cells. We're going to find that out for sure in a bit. Uh, I like the size of the copper bus here, you know, really big beefy thing for 100 amps. That looks like plenty. What's it got for wire? For wire, it's running uh, 6 gauge. That's pretty typical for batteries in this power class. We'll, uh, run the thermal camera on it and see if it gets hot or anything, but I expect it to be just fine. It's a nice, pretty orange. And uh, the ribbon cable here to do the inner cell voltages is also orange. They stayed with a bit of a theme. All right, next step is we're gonna put some power in this. We're gonna do what you never, ever, ever should do. So many people think BMS is there to stop your charging. Just hook it up to a charger until it goes click. That is so bad for these batteries. Uh, this is there so that these don't burst into flames or more likely vent and pop and lose their ability to ever contain power again. But it is not the safe, long life way to charge them. We're going to do this one time in this battery's life and for the rest of its life it'll probably be charged by a bank manager. So, got my power supply here. Let's hook it up and put some power in and see what happens. Okay, I'll hook the positive side onto here, right onto the battery, because that's the same as hooking to the positive pole. And the negative pole comes up here, so it's more convenient for me to hook it right on there. Always scares me when that happens. What that is, is the battery, of course, has, you know, 13 volts, and there's a bunch of capacitors in my charge supply, so it charges up the supply. Okay, we hit that, and let it charge. I've got it charging at 5 amps right now, and we'll see what happens. Okay, after charging for a little bit, I see a light blinking here, and it's labeled battery one, bat one. Oh, now another one's blinking at the end. I think what we're seeing here is these individual cells are coming up in voltage in this, up oh, now a third one. This is it doing the passive balancing trick. So whenever one of the cells gets above a certain voltage, it will put a little resistor across them and take power out of that, trying to get them all even. Yep, that appears to be what's happening. And it's still taking a charge though. Let's look at the voltage. 14.19 volts going up. We'll let this go up until the BMS shuts off. But it'll go up pretty fast now. Once you're up in what they call the hockey stick, Lithium batteries don't go up very much in voltage, just ever so slowly until they're fully charged. And then once they're fully charged, they go up in voltage very fast. They have no place to put that power. Um, it's actually kind of bad what happens to them inside when you uh, get up into that hockey stick. Won't kill them immediately or anything, but instead of getting 15 years out of a bank, you might get more like six or three or something like that. So we don't want that. How's it going? Give it another quick check. Now it's 14.44 volts. Usually if the batteries are all balanced nicely, you expect this thing to click out at around 14.6 volts. 
But I've noticed that this manufacturer of BMS's sets their numbers a little bit higher. Um, their choice. Uh, I've been charging to that higher amount whenever I have one of their BMS's and nothing's burst into flames or leaked gas or anything, so I guess it works okay. Fourteen point five five. Okay, the battery has stopped taking power. The BMS is shut down. I didn't catch exactly the second it happened, but it's uh, fourteen point nine volts. So that's higher than fourteen point six, but not ridiculous. Now let me go right down the the list of batteries here, starting at the most positive. The first cell is three point six nine eight volts. The second cell is 3.606 volts. Third cell is 3.577 volts. And the last cell, 3.590 volts. So in checking the cells, it looks like cell number one is the highest at 3.6, and uh, cell number three is the lowest at about one-tenth uh, of a volt lower. That's a little bit too far. I would have liked to have seen these two be closer, but um, it does have a balancing circuit, and I'm sure right now this cell is being, uh, and it is, uh, drawn down. It's incredibly slow how, how fast these guys can draw power out, uh, and this guy isn't. So they're even evening themselves out. It would probably eventually be happier. But that's what it is. Um, it's acceptable. That seems to be typical for Chinese batteries. As they arrive, the cells aren't perfectly balanced and they rely on some time and some time with the, the BMS to, to take care of it for them after the case. It's the difference between a $280 battery and a $900 battery. And honestly, I'd rather have the $280 battery and uh, deal with that. Let me show you something. Since this one is so crazy easy to open up, and you probably would open it up if you wanted to put internal lighting or something in it. Here's what you can do. You can take a resistor. This is a 2 ohm power resistor. While you're using it, make sure it doesn't get too hot because it. what I'm about to do is just burning heat, making heat right in there. If you very carefully touch it to one of the cells, you're actually burning power out of that cell. And remember, this cell was the highest one. So if I spend just a little bit of time on this, and then I go back to my meter, I should see a lower number. Three point six three. I didn't spend much time on it and they're all going down. That isn't a very good example of, you know, what really would have to happen. But if you use something like this to more quickly discharge the higher cells, you'll get them all in the same ballpark. Now the thing about charging a battery is you charge up um, until a bunch of criteria is met. One is has to do with the current, one is the time and the history, but the chief one is the voltage. And if you're doing it from the outside, it's the aggregate voltage of all of the cells. This plus this plus this plus this. That gets you up in that 13 volt range. If you have one volt cell that's higher, obviously you're going to get a little higher voltage while there's still capacity in the others. So that steals some from the capacity of the battery. On the other hand, if you discharge it all the way till dead, when the lowest cell goes too low, because that's dangerous for lithium cells as well, the BMS will shut it down, shut down the whole battery. If one of the cells was lower than the others, again, you're shorting yourself out of power that was available in the other batteries. So if you want every single amp hour, and this is so easy to, um, to do it to, you open up the case, you can use a method like this to balance the cells out. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in the case and I'm gonna take it back into our aft cabin. I'm going to hook it up to some big loads and uh, we're gonna see how it performs when we draw 100 amps out of it. Okay, we're back here. We've got the battery set up on my three kilowatt inverter. Um, I've got it hooked to a nice uh, big chunky power heat load. When I turn this on, we'll be pulling 100 amps. And uh, it's hot back here, but it's not as bad as it would be because we've turned on our air conditioner. 
If you've been watching those videos, uh, there's a couple guys interested in restarting this company for me. I want to invent, I don't want to sell. So uh, this air conditioner might be available again. Check the videos uh, if you want to see about it. It uses so little power that you can run air conditioning on solar power. It's really pretty cool. It uses like a third of what others use. Well, let's get at it. So uh, we are going to turn it on. Let's turn it on. All right. We're drawing just a little over 100 amps. Uh, the voltage went down to 12.9. Um, that might be the best yet. I'll have to check my notes, but I think 12.6 was the best for the initial full load. So there's probably nothing short on this one. It's got nice low resistance. Uh, again, good for you car stereo guys. You know, can do the punch. Take a look with the FLIR here. This is a, a thermal camera. Now we've just started up, so we don't know really what's going on yet, but we're starting to see a little heat as one would. Let's see what it is. Okay, so we're seeing that the heat sink here is just a little bit warm, but that's what its job is. The transistors coming out of uh, the switching section of the BMS make heat. And I guess what we're doing is looking right down the crack at the heat coming out of there. But I can't feel anything yet, really. It's at uh, 40, 50 degrees. Okay, I fired this all up without my infrared camera turned on, so you probably, yeah, anyway, I screwed that up. It's been running for three minutes now. When I originally turned it on, the voltage dropped down to 12.9, which is an excellent, excellent number. I believe the next best battery was 12.6 initially. It's now down to 12.6 after three, four minutes. Okay, let's take a look at heat. It's been running for a few minutes. Um, as always, kind of the hottest thing in the room is my inverter wires because they're a little small for this job. But the actual BMS and uh, battery looks just fine to me. Uh, I guess the hottest thing in here looks like 60 Celsius. That's this. Yeah, I can feel a little warm. I mean, it's quite warm, but it's moving a lot of power. All right, that's uh, north of 10 minutes. Let's take a look at it. Uh, voltage is 12.58. Uh, 12 that is a really good number. And let's look at the temperature. Uh, nothing looks too hot. The hottest spot is uh, just under 80 Celsius, and it's right here where this uh, terminal from the battery goes. Um, that's not too hot. This is, remember, running at absolute full rated power for 10 whole minutes. And it really looks like this thing could just continue at this rate for, you know, until it's basically done. I think it's a nice, a nice battery. Okay, we're going to take it back to the table now. We're going to charge it back up properly with the bank manager, get it to true 100%. I'm going to do a discharge cycle, and I'll be back to you with the results of how many amp hours it can actually deliver. Well, I've done the testing. I charged it back up to a proper 100%, no more, you know, using the bank manager. I then discharged it through calibrated discharge devices, and they came up with 100.25 amp hours. Well, I think that's great. Uh, we pay for 100, we got 100. What more can we ask? Um, I'm gonna do something now that's very different. It's a little silly maybe, but I'm thinking, why would you want a battery in a transparent case? I mean, it doesn't make the battery work better. It's to look at it, to kind of have that bling value, to see what's inside. So. I got myself a strip of LED lights. These are just whites. You can get these that twinkle and do all kinds of stuff. And I'm gonna take a second here and put this inside the case and then hook it up and put it all back together just for the fun of it. That's fired up. Let's put it in the case. Wow, 
that's kind of neat. Um, I wouldn't do it on a boat because I put the batteries away in the bilge or something. But if you're one of these car stereo guys and you did a little better job than I did, uh, I didn't stick it on right. But you get the idea. You can make this thing glow. Probably drill a little hole and put a switch on it, you know, so you can turn it off when you're not using it. But <laughs> it's kind of kind of interesting in its own way. Well, let's go down the leaderboard and see how this one lines up with the other batteries. Uh, it's got a lot to be said for it. I got to say that initially when they offered it, I thought it was the silliest idea ever. <laughs> Transparent case. And uh, my contact at the battery company, his name is David. Got to really like him. We've been talking a lot. Oh, he's a good guy. Uh, knows his stuff and, and cares about the product. And when he talked about this, he was obviously so proud. And I, I really wanted to say, don't do that, man. Uh, but I think for the right people, this is probably pretty cool. And the important thing is, in going through it, it's actually a good battery. It's one of the better batteries, even though it's in the silly case. So let's go through it. First thing, capacity. Well, it's 100 amp hours plus just a skosh. As long as it's 100 or damn close, I think that's great. The cells oh, were fairly balanced. They're a little off. In fact, this probably will get more capacity after it's got a chance to balance itself a little more. Um, the other Elefast is based on the same batteries. I like them a lot. I like these a lot. I think these cells are great. Build quality, um, well, that comes down to like, you know, the wiring and stuff. Everything is fine. We ran 100 amps through it for a sustained amount of time and it, it didn't get hot in any real way. Um, the BMS is from that company that I can't pronounce, that company. and. I really dove deep into the BMS for the uh, other Elefast and I really liked it. I kind of decided if I ever built my own battery, I would seriously consider using this company's BMS. This is more their bare bones uh, one, but it, it does what it needs to do. I like particularly that it has the little balance light. Since it's a transparent case, I can actually see that it's balancing when it is, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, I guess if you had one of these batteries and you felt you wanted to balance it, it would be good not to go right up to full voltage. Just go up high enough that one of the lights comes on. And uh, at that voltage, eventually, the, if you held it there, the light would stop being on. And then you come up a little higher, maybe until two lights are on. Uh, but that's, that's what I would do. I'm becoming more a fan of something I've just stumbled across. When I take the maximum rated amps out of one of these batteries, I see the voltage come down, of course, as it would, and it comes down to a certain amount. Well, the batteries that aren't built well, that have substandard wiring or bus bars or whatever, there's all this resistance, and maybe the cells aren't so great, they come way down in voltage. The higher that voltage is, the better for everything, but that's a really good indicator of the resistance of the battery. So this actually has won the prize so far. It's having the lowest resistance, therefore the highest voltage while dumping out its rated power. Um, so even though it's in a, a, a transparent case, it's not just about good looks. This battery is actually a good battery. So build quality, excellent. Case. This case wouldn't be for everybody, you know, but the battery inside it is fine and the case isn't a problem. Um, if you are the kind of guy that thinks having lights inside your case is extra super special, well, it's the only chance. You can only do it with this. They put a lot of effort into this structure. It's got this steel structure wrapping and holding the battery so they're not using foam. I mean, I wish that didn't have all this airspace. I really like that it's a screw down case. I mean, there's a little bit of effort in getting the plugs out, but not a big effort. You can open it up, do work on it, screw it back together, and it's as good as new. The seal will seal when you screw it together. I gotta say, I'm a little concerned because in my experience, transparent plastics are a little more brittle than the colored plastics. To get the transparency, I guess they can't put as much plasticizer in it. Um, but, you know, if it gets to you, it gets to you. I raised that concern with David, and David said they're going to take special care in packing, and I believe, well, unless it becomes a problem for him, but his initial idea is he's going to take responsibility for delivery, so it's going to arrive in good condition. So, you know, and it's fine. Don't, don't beat it around. It's a, it's a battery. It's not a, not a wrecking ball. 
So um, for the case, for lots of different reasons, I think I gave it an excellent company. This is the same company, Elefast, that makes the one with the Bluetooth BMS. I really like that battery. I really like this battery. I really like dealing with David and company, as I said. I'll give them an excellent. Final thing is comparison. You know, is it worth the money? Well, it's not a very expensive battery. It electrically does what it's supposed to do. I liked its low resistance a lot. I think even if it wasn't for the case, I would buy this battery just as a, a good battery. So um, that's great. I think this is an excellent battery deal. The other Elefast has been at the top position in the leaderboard for quite a while, and uh, this is definitely right up there with it. Thanks a lot for watching this. Uh, as you know, there is that leaderboard in the description below. I highly recommend you click down to that. If I change my mind on this battery, that's where the notes will be. Uh, if uh, new batteries come up, they'll all be down there. You can compare them. So if you're looking to buy a battery, go to the leaderboard. Also, there'll be a place that'll be a link to, well, buying it on Amazon if that's an option or buying it with a discount code if that's an option. So whatever the cheapest price I can find for you, it'll always be there. Thank you, everybody on Patreon that signed up to, you know, throw us some money to buy us a beer. Uh, honestly, we're not buying beer with all of that because we'd be dead, but thank you. Um, also, the people that go at the higher levels, you know, they get my phone calls. It's been fun uh, kind of digging into your boat's electrical system and making suggestions and getting it working. If you don't know about that, that's a, an option that's there, but that's all on Patreon. Uh, thanks for watching my video and bye from Clark.